Hi there, welcome to City on a Hill Church Online. My name is Paul, Paul Graham, and I'm one of the pastors in the church. I'm delighted that you're taking the time to join with me today. In a few minutes, we're going to dive into God's Word, but just, just let me pray, and I'm going to ask you just to prepare your heart to receive from God. Father God, loving God, Jesus, our beautiful Savior, Holy Spirit, our teacher. We ask that you come now, and as we open your word, that you will teach us, that we will hear from you, and having heard from you, that we will have the grace and we will have the courage to obey what you're asking us to do today. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I've spent um, part of this weekend, um, for the first time in a long time, immersing myself in the world of Mario Kart and Nintendo Wii. Our youngest has a console and he loves playing it. And he challenged me over the weekend to a number of games. I'm not going to say who won those games. Suffice to say that we were immersed into this world. We all are immersed in something, books, hobbies, relationships, work, and that, that's fine. But let's just pull back and think about culture. And as I thought of culture this week, I think we are living in a culture that is immersed in itself. We don't need outside help or outside authority or outside people to speak to us. We have the answers. That's the answer. That's the heartbeat. That's the way culture works. We turn in on ourselves. I turn on the news. Goodness, where is the good news? Turn in on the news and I, I hear about Marseille, a city I lived in for many years caught up and immersed in anxiety and, and, and fighting and hurting each other. I turn on the news, I hear about abuse in the United Kingdom, people being hurt. I turn on the news, I hear about anxiety, people stressed and concerned, people without hope. We have turned in on ourselves, immersed in ourselves. Let's be honest, we do not have the answers. What if there were a God, a loving God, who fully knew us, fully understood us, and still fully loved us? What if there were a God who made a plan to rescue us from being immersed in the shallows, and whose heart's desire is to immerse us in himself, and in the beauty and depths and glory of who God is. I have great news for you today. We can be immersed in God, who He is, this inexhaustibly interesting God who is not boring, who is full of life, and who calls us to be immersed in Him. So immersed is the key thought that I want to bring to you today. We're in our series on the Holy Spirit and we're thinking today about the baptism with the Holy Spirit. What does that look like? What does it mean to be immersed in the Holy Spirit? And here's the phrase that I want you to think about and take away. Immersed with the Holy Spirit means that we will experience the reality of who God is. Immersed with the Holy Spirit, we will experience the reality of who God is. That is a great truth to think about today. So let's stop and let's think, let's read scripture and talk about being immersed. We're going to go to the New Testament, to Acts chapter 1. Jesus is risen from the dead. He's with his 12 disciples, and this is what Jesus says to them. And while staying with them, he, that is Jesus, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. What is that promise? Well, he goes on to say, 
you have heard from me. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Baptized, immersed in, immersed with the Holy Spirit. A really helpful book on the history of Pentecostalism by a guy called Alan Wheaton. He points point out two things. Firstly, there are diverse understandings of the baptism with the Holy Spirit across the Pentecostal movement. And yet, there is one thing in common. The language that is used in the, in the New Testament overlaps, immersed, poured, rivers of life, baptized into all of this language overlaps to say that we can be immersed in the abundance of who God is. So diverse understandings but a common language talking about being poured out, baptized in, immersed with, filled up with the Holy Spirit. The second thing he points out which I find absolutely fascinating, there is in the Pentecostal charismatic movement an emphasis on the experiential side of Christianity. And that's why the charismatic church has grown over these last years. People do not just want facts or doctrine or understanding. Those things are important, but they want to experience God. And the glory, the beauty of Christianity is that the Holy Spirit comes to immerse us in the reality of an experience with God. I think of a guy that I know called Phil Emerson. He came to faith in Jesus as a young boy and is now a church leader of a thriving church in Northern Ireland. When he was in his mid-30s, for the first time, Phil realized that God loved him. Wow! Suddenly immersed by the Holy Spirit into the love of God. This is what he writes. I had a baptism of God's love. I pray that you will have that baptism today. I had a baptism of God's love. I always thought that God was just like an angry father who tolerated me, loved me, but didn't really like me and sort of put up with me. But something happened one day and it was like a baptism of the love of God. It broke me and I wept and I wept and it went on for days. Do you hear what Phil's saying? Immersed by the Holy Spirit into the reality of the love of God. Not the knowledge, but the reality of God's love. This week in preparing to share these thoughts with you, I have stopped at times and I have smiled and at times I've had tears and at times I've laughed with joy because God really loves me. May you be immersed by the Holy Spirit today into the reality of the love of God. Are you dry? Then you need to be baptized with the Spirit. Are you empty? Then you need God's Holy Spirit to fill you. Are you weak? Then you need the Holy Spirit to come upon you and give you strength. I just want us to pause for a couple of minutes and it's important that I make these clear understandings and statements from Scripture. When we're talking about immersion, there are two things that we need to understand. There is the immersion, the baptism with the Holy Spirit, which comes at conversion. 1 Corinthians 12, Paul talks about that. Listen to what he says. Just as a body, though one has many parts, so think of your body, it has many parts, but those many parts form one body. And then Paul says, so, in the same way, it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by or with or in one spirit so that we form one body. 
This is a conversion experience. When you become a Christian, you are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ, which is the church. That happens at conversion. So that's the first baptism, immersed at conversion by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. But secondly, the New Testament encourages us to seek a new and fresh immersion of the Holy Spirit so that we will be immersed with the Holy Spirit as believers and that we will experience fresh, new, life-changing experiences of God. Yes, we've received the Holy Spirit at conversion, but we need to cry out, God, there's more of you. I want to be baptized afresh. I want to be immersed afresh into the reality of who you are. Acts 1 verse 5, Scripture says, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And that Holy Spirit promised by Jesus is then given on the day of Pentecost. The picture that God gave me of Jesus coming and opening up the way for the Holy Spirit to be given to all people. The picture he gave me was this of a dam. Think of this huge dam that you cannot measure or get your, your eyes right. It's so huge, the dam of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is given to particular people for specific time, for specific jobs. The dam, as it were, someone takes the Holy Spirit and puts it on someone, but it's just for a short time and for a specific task. And then Jesus comes, if you will, he's the dam buster, and the dam floods out. We are immersed in Jesus' name into the Holy Spirit, and by the Holy Spirit we begin to taste and see and understand the reality of who God is. All of that is only possible because of this, because of what Jesus did on the cross. Listen to what Acts 2 verse 32 says. God raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. He is now exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and he has poured him out. The dam has burst. The Spirit, because of all that Jesus did on the cross, is poured out in abundance so that we may be immersed in the Holy Spirit. This is our time. 2023 is the time of the Holy Spirit. We live in the age of the Holy Spirit. I hope you're not settling for less. I hope you're not settling for some experience that other people have, but it cannot be yours. It can be yours. The dam has been burst. The Holy Spirit is being poured out. Are you thirsty? Are you hungry? Do you want more of God? then as you pray to God, he will meet with you. I love the language that is used of the Holy Spirit. Did you notice it? It's about water, it's about abundance, it's about being poured out and being filled up, it's about being immersed in. Think of water in terms of its importance in the Middle East. In the Old Testament and in the ancient Middle East, water was a very precious and very scarce commodity. People didn't have showers and baths the way that we can have them today. To maintain bodily cleanliness, they had to use oils and perfumes, not water. And then God comes and in through Jesus, he says, but this is all about an abundance of water being poured out and you may be immersed in this water, immersed in the Holy Spirit. And how, you might ask, can I be immersed in and with the Holy Spirit so that you experience the reality of God? The simple answer is God comes where he is wanted 
If you want this, God will give it to you. But if you're not thirsty, you won't ask for it. Listen to the words of Jesus, John chapter 7. Jesus stood up and in a loud voice said, Let anyone who is thirsty, someone who's thirsty, they want something. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers, there's that image again, rivers of living water will flow from within. And by this, Jesus meant the Spirit. God comes where he's wanted. And if you want, and if you are thirsty for the immersion of the Holy Spirit, then God will give it to you. Are you thirsty? God comes where he's wanted. May you cry out, more of you, God, more of you, God. Having thought about being immersed in and with the Holy Spirit and all these beautiful pictures of water, of being filled up, immersed and baptized, I want us to think of just a couple of very practical outworkings of this. And the word I want to put on your heart is this, awakened. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when you are immersed in the Holy Spirit, it wakens you up to new possibilities. Let's go back to Acts chapter 2. Here is 120 believers in Jesus. They've been with Jesus for a number of weeks, but now Jesus has left. And maybe, and, and maybe it's my imagination to a degree, but maybe they are settling in. Maybe they're becoming comfortable. Maybe they are not really thirsty for more. And they're meeting in a room, 120 of them. Many of those people are carrying shame. The shame that Peter carries because of his denial. The shame that all the disciples carry because they all left Jesus. And so here they are, 120 believers. Jesus has left. What's happening? What's going to be next? What about our shame? What about how we let Jesus down? And then Acts chapter 2 says this. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house. I'm standing in a park today and the wind is blowing around me. The Holy Spirit came and woke up these believers who were comfortable and settling down. And it blew like the wind in the trees around me. I love that image. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the entire house. And divided tongues as of fire, hold on to that image, appeared on them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled, there's our word again, filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 120 ordinary people. The Spirit blows like the wind. The Spirit fills them and they are awakened to new possibilities and to hope in their life. There are two things I want to leave with you as we finish today. The Holy Spirit comes, they are immersed in Him and they are awakened, first of all, to power. God says, when you are immersed in my spirit, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. There's the first thing. Awakened by the spirit to be witnesses. What happened in Jerusalem amongst those 120 people was not supposed to stay in the room. It was supposed to spill out into everyday life and they were to be witnesses of who Jesus was. They were all filled with the Spirit 
and they continued to speak the word of God with boldness. That's Acts chapter 4. Can you see what the Holy Spirit's doing? Filling them, immersing them, but then saying, right, go out and in the Spirit have the boldness and the courage to be my witnesses. <laughs> I, if I'm honest, there are times when I struggle to be a witness. Sometimes I'd rather keep quiet because it's going to disturb the group that I'm part of. I think we all feel that at times. May God, by his Holy Spirit, stir us as a church to give us the boldness that we as ordinary people, this is not an elite group of people. These are ordinary believers filled with the extraordinary Holy Spirit and able and emboldened to be witnesses. May that be across our church. This is not something for a Sunday only. It's something that you do every day. Let me tell you about a beautiful story of a guy called Ben. Um, ben was a follower of Jesus and one evening he's out visiting a family from the church and he notices a group of young guys and they're standing together and they're drinking. And Ben, filled with the Holy Spirit, feels the Holy Spirit just prompting him, go and speak to them. And Ben takes his courage, not in his two hands, but he takes his courage because of the Holy Spirit. And he goes up to the group and he says to the guy who's the leader, you, you're drinking today because you split from your girlfriend two days ago. Is that right? Wow. <laughs> and the guy goes, yes, it's exactly what happened to me. Two days ago, I split up with my girlfriend. And then the Holy Spirit prompts Ben again and he says to this young man, Jesus has sent me with a message for you. You are just like me. You've given up rugby because of an ACL injury, just like I have. And Ben rolled up the leg of his trousers and showed him an ACL injury. And the young man said, it's exactly what happened to me. I got this injury and I can't play rugby. My life's devastated. And then Ben said, prompted by the Holy Spirit, you're also just like me because your dad was a minister, isn't he? And the guy says, where are you getting this information from? And then Ben says to this young man, is it okay if I pray with you? And by that stage, the young man says, yes, please, because God is doing something. Ben, an ordinary follower of Jesus, immersed in the Holy Spirit and given the boldness to be a witness. That is what's on the table for us. May city on a hill spill out into the streets of our city. May we be scattered across our city, filled with the Spirit and given the boldness to be witnesses. And I can hear you saying, Amen. So these group of believers by the Holy Spirit are awakened to be witnesses. The second thing that they are awakened to is to the miraculous. You look at Acts and Acts chapter 2 and then into the next few chapters, it says that there were many signs and wonders, miraculous. Oh, oh may God awaken us to the miraculous. We've we settled for the mundane. Let the Holy Spirit awaken us to the miraculous. I think of a true story that a lady shared with me just this week. Her name's Heather. She's a follower of Jesus. She was in a church in Edinburgh. She found herself really seriously ill with long-term COVID. Couldn't stand more than two minutes losing her voice. She went to an event in Glasgow, Christian event. The guy sitting beside her prayed for her. They were to pray together in twos. And as they prayed, this guy had a prompting by the Holy Spirit. And this is what happened. He stood up in front of Heather, who could hardly walk, and who was losing her voice. He stood up in front of Heather and he said, Heather, 
silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. <laughs> and he said, Heather, give me your hands. And Heather put out her hands and this guy just helped her stand. She said, before she knew it, she found herself standing for 30 minutes caught up in worship and singing with that gathered number of people. Wow. She went to her doctors. The doctors looked at her lungs, looked at where the COVID had damaged her internal organs. And they said, Heather, there is no sign of anything. It's gone. We don't know how. We know how because the Holy Spirit did a miraculous healing in the life of Heather. And Heather has a testimony now amongst her friends, people who are agnostic going, Heather, you're walking, you've got your vo voice, you've got energy. How did that happen? She tells the story of how Jesus healed her. May we, ordinary people filled with the extraordinary Holy Spirit, May we see signs and wonders and miraculous things happening. Believe it, it's possible. The Holy Spirit has been poured out upon us. Amen. And the last thing is this group of believers in Jerusalem, as they are immersed in the Holy Spirit, they are awakened to the power to witness. They are awakened to the miraculous and they are awakened to purity. Did you notice the language that Luke uses in Acts chapter two? Divided tongues as of fire appeared on them. Just think of the picture of fire. Fire throughout the Bible is a symbol of the presence of God, of a holy God, and it is a symbol of purity. God, by his Holy Spirit, was calling these believers to live lives of purity. I think you and I know as followers of Jesus that we live in a time of compromise. All around us, culture is compromising, pushing God to the side. Theo Hobson, in a book commenting on compromise in culture, says this. What once was universally condemned is now celebrated. What was celebrated is condemned. And those who refuse to celebrate are condemned. Just think of that phrase that I think summarizes our culture. What was universally condemned is now celebrated. What once was celebrated is condemned. And if you refuse to celebrate, you are condemned. Let's be honest. The sexual revolution, with all that concerns us, has also at times infiltrated the church. We need to be very careful. The Holy Spirit is calling us not to compromise. It's difficult in this generation, in this culture. But God's appealing to you today by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be pure. Don't compromise. John Tyson tells, a church leader in New York, tells of going to a prayer meeting as a young student, just seeking God. And he went in and there was a group of ladies. He called them the church mothers. They were kind of quite scary and full on. And one of them, brought John over and said, John, some may, you may not. <laughs> some may, by that they meant some people may compromise, you may not. Do you hear that, to, that word to you today? Some may, but by God's grace and the Holy Spirit, you may not. Listen, God is not a moral policeman. He is the lover seeking his beloved. Do you realize that we as followers of Jesus are engaged to be married? We're not just going to be at a wedding. We will be the bride at the wedding. 
revelation. And when you are engaged, everything changes. What you do with your time, the way you spend your money, everything changes. God's calling us to purity in light of our wedding day. We will live differently so that when that wedding day comes, we are pure and ready to be betrothed to our groom. So live in the light of the wedding that is to come and may the Holy Spirit enable you to remain pure. We're going to finish and I'm going to pray. So thankful for the time you've given me today just to listen to God's word. I want you wherever you are just perhaps to slow down, close your eyes as we finish. We've thought about being immersed with the Holy Spirit, this baptism with the Holy Spirit. Immersed with the Holy Spirit so that we experience the reality of who God is. Here's my question. Just close your eyes and think about it as we finish. What have you heard? What has God said to you over the last 30 minutes? You've heard something. What has God said to you? It will be different for each one. And my second question is, what will you do? God has said something. I don't know what it is. And now, what will you do? What difference will it make? Oh, God comes where he's wanted. And as you want him, he's going to empower you to live out what he has said to you. Filled with the Holy Spirit, it's something that you can get other people to pray for you. Filled with the Holy Spirit, immersed in the Holy Spirit, is also what you do on a daily basis as you take time to read your Bible, to be on your knees before God and spending time in His presence. It's not just a Sunday event, it can be that, but it has to be daily. Immerse yourself every day in God's Word and in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to finish and as you're praying your response, I'm aware that there are people joining us today and this whole story of God and God coming near and His Holy Spirit is something that you've not yet entered into. And I want to give you the opportunity today of becoming a follower of Jesus. It's the best decision you'll ever make. In the book of Acts where we were reading about the Holy Spirit, Peter says at the end, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. So you've come today and you've joined us and if you call on the name of Jesus, you will be saved. I'm going to pray and I want you just to take these words for yourself. Dear God, you know me. I thank you for the possibility that you hold out in front of me of a life immersed in the Holy Spirit. But God, I need you to save me. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the cross. I ask, oh God, for your mercy that you will forgive me all my sin. I believe your word. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So today, I call on your name, Jesus. Save me. King Jesus, save me. This is my prayer. Amen. Thank you for spending this time with me. Take away the Word of God, look into it, spend time with it, and may you know and experience on a regular basis what it is to be immersed in the Holy Spirit so that you can experience the reality of who God is. 
Thank you so much.